Holy Wire Mod here. This is going to be tutorial 5C in the How to Build series. And before we start, I want to take a moment to compare what we have done to a bigger project such as Autogun Stand 5. So, what we have done has a price editor. Uh, in the last tutorial, we went over that. So, we used two different buttons to edit the price on this display. Now, you can use a EGP or console screen, like I said before. So, let's go inside and get an example of EGP screen, where just like before, we have two different buttons. But also we have a slide bar, which is another example input method that you can use. So that's a tutorial on its own right there. But let's look then at the opposite case, the extreme case of having this button, right? So instead of having a button, I have a display screen right here, which if you really think about it, is two different buttons, one button to select a gun for each gun, and then an additional third button for the actual purchase of the gun that has been selected. So this button is simply represented by a screen and then we have the money pot which is obviously represented by just a money pot with a collection method right behind it and other than that what I really want to focus this tutorial on right here is multiple shipments which our expression 2 chip is only geared towards one different shipment so I'm going to be using only one user and one ranger in here but we're going to be coding it as if we're, we have two and also two buttons as well unless you have a fancy display like this so let us then go and edit the inputs first so instead of distance we're gonna have ranger 1 and ranger 2 distance 1 distance 2 um, instead of button we're gonna have button 1 button 2 now we're not gonna be able to really edit the prices but just so I can show you how to change this to match the format that we're about to do. I'm going to keep that there. All right, so let's look at our initial conditions first. We're going to start, actually, I'm sorry, we need to look at our output. So we're going to have user one and user two. And instead of spawn money, I'm going to put spawn amount. So instead of spawn money, spawn amount, and spawn amount. And instead of price, well, we're going to have guns and prices and these are going to be arrays which cover in tutorial 6a expression 2 series so guns are going to be an array and our first gun is going to be the shotgun and then the second gun will be a mac 10 next we're going to have the prices which is going to be an array of 200 for the shotgun and 250 for the mac 10 now you could initialize your users here to zero like this uh, if you really want to make sure that they're never going to mess up. However, that's up to you. Um, well, let's look then at the click. So click here, we have reset. Um, so I'll put reset, you know, keep it reset one right there. Uh, instead of user, we're going to put user one. And the reason we have reset one is because we have two different users so we also need a reset two which means we're going to need a way to implement two different timers here okay so let's recall tutorial 15a in the expression 2 series where we go over functions so let's start making the function we'll say function it's going to output a number it's going to be called gun purchase and it's going to have an argument n which is going to be some number. So we're going to say if money is greater than prices, and then we're going to say n. So n right here, we can actually really call index. So index, and that is going to be of type number. And then we'll say and when spawn amount is equal to zero. So this is going to make sure we don't get a spasm of uh, sales happening all at once. So let's then say that spawn amount is equal to prices index number. Okay, so that's just like me saying this right here. And then I'm going to say timer and then I'll say reset 
and we're going to use concatenation, go for that tutorial 7a to expression 2 series. We're going to have concatenation and we're going to put n. So this is going to say either reset 1 or reset 2, depending on what the index is, right? Okay, so then we're going to say 1000 milliseconds. So it's pretty much saying this. And also, we're going to return. Actually, you know what? Let's make it a little bit fancier. Let's say we want to put a hint. We'll say, you have sold a, and then we'll put guns index string, right? So now we're using this right here. And then we'll say for, and now we're going to put prices index number then put a little bit of excitement right there make it last for five seconds and let's call it a day so now we just need to return something so we're going to return one and this one is going to represent that the function or the conditions have been met so it was a successful sale so we're going to output one otherwise we're just going to return zero and it's going to be unsuccessful so now that we have this line, we no longer need this line. And we no longer need this line because we have timer right here. We no longer need this condition. And we just need to set it up to if button one range one or distance one, else if and button two and range or two, then we're going to have Generally, we'd have user1 and user2 equal 1. However, now we're going to implement the function here. And we'd say gun purchase. And then we're going to say 1, which is going to be the index we're referencing. So if those conditions are met, then we're going to call this function. And all the indexes are going to be 1s. And user1 is going to be triggered. And it's going to trigger this reset and user one is going to be set back to zero as well as the spawn amount. So that's the general idea for that. So we also do that for user two. So just copy and paste this and change this to two and two. Now, lastly, like I said earlier in the tutorial, uh, let's make it to where, okay, so let's say, okay, we have two different add buttons then we'd have a1 so for example this would be prices one number is going to be equal to prices or assigned to one number right here plus 25 so that's how you'd rewrite the line if you wanted to do it like this um, you do the same thing for subtract same format just switch this to subtraction and but anyway, let's look at this right now. So let's make sure there's no errors. All right, so right here, there's space right there. And we are ready and it's nighttime. Did it really take that long? I oh, hope not. Anyway, so let's wire this up real quick. So we're gonna have ranger to distance and then we're gonna have button one to this button. And then we're gonna make sure this is set to user one and spawn amount, set the spawn amount and money's already set. All right, that's everything. So let's go to become a gun dealer. And let's get shotgun. So we're gonna move this into position and then get some money out. So remember this price is not gonna display the proper amount. So we have 200 in here and I go and I press the button and it sells. And just to make sure that everything's working, let's put let's put another 200 right here. Whoops. There we go. That's the wrong bond. So let's switch it over to max 10 also before actually selling this. So we'll do this and we'll put there. All right. So let's go to max 10. So we unwire this, unwire this, and I'm going to say button two. And then we're going to have Ranger 2. So this is going to be acting as if it were Ranger 2. And then we're going to have this sent to User 2. So this is just to show you 
that it works for both buttons. Or both shipments rather, not both buttons. Okay, so now we have 600 in here. So we press here, and it says you have sold the Mac 10 for 250. Let's make sure that user was wired up correctly. Yeah, it's user 2. Then this, there we go. All right, so now let's look at an example where we don't have enough money. So we don't have enough money here. And if I rewire it back to the shotgun, so if we go here to user one, and we rewire this to ranger one, to button one, get a shotgun and everything. So we set up the conditions for a shotgun. It doesn't work either. So if you want to add three, four, five, six guns, you can do that simply by increasing these values right here and adding the appropriate statements for these and this will work just fine as is. So anyway, that's going to cover how to go for multiple shipments. I hope that was educational. You learned something. And if you have any more questions, please leave so in the comments below or if you have any suggestions too that you'd like to see, uh, feel free to leave that as well. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.